what's up? Thank you for coming to Loki's Effect. So, this is episode one. So, what is it? But first, we're going to get to the word. So, it says Ephesians 3 and 7, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. See, there's power that God gives us that he wants to work in us to do his work or his will. Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. As I said, God uses people to do his work. So I am just a messenger of God. So Proverbs 25 and 11, the message version, the right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry and a wise friend's timely reprimand is like a gold ring slipped on his finger. That's verse 12. Let's go to verse 12, King James Version. As an earring of gold, an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. So what is that saying? Reprove, to scold or correct, usually gently or with kindly intent. The GNT Version, it says, A warning given by an experienced person to someone willing to listen is more valuable than gold rings or or jewelry made of the finest gold. The name Loki is actually my nickname, but where does it come from? Its origination is from Ecuador. It means run crazy like a horse for God, run crazy like a locomotive for God. Not to be confused with Loki, the character of Mischief, you know, Thor's brother. So, Hence why you have L-O-K-E-Y. But it was my nickname, you know, growing up and my dad has it. You know, my son has it. And so we're going to keep that going on. <clears throat> William, that's my real name. Bold, resolute protector. Strong-willed warrior. A conqueror's name. Conquerors conquer territories. At times we need someone that can conquer territories or areas in our minds God will only allow your mind to plague you for so long see there's some things there's some answers to some things that you want to know but God will allow you to think something for a certain period of time whether that's months days years and then God will come to you and he will let you know John 13 and 7 Jesus replied, you do not understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. That's the NLT version. Proverbs 20 and 24. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? New King James Version. The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? But remember, Jesus said, someday you will know, right? Proverbs 3 and 5. New King James Version, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean out to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. See, what a lot of us do is when things happen, we lean to our own understanding when that's not what God wants us to do. Isaiah 55 and 8, one of my favorite New King James Version, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord, for as the heavens, verse 9, are higher than, your, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So with Loki's effect, watch this, there is no way that I can come in contact with you and it does not affect your life in the way that God design, designed for you to go. There's no way. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's the King James Version. Expected end. See, there's an end that God expects for you. Expect it. <clears throat> now, some translations say, for I know the plans I have for you. 
expected is to think that something will probably or certainly happen. See, we always, we often hear this, right? God is in control. But does God always take control? What are we in control of ourselves? I mean, if you look in the Bible, Lot's wife, you know, they told her not to look back. And she looked back and she turned to a pillar of salt. But there are some things that happen to us and we would like to know why. Effect to produce an effort upon someone or something to act on or cause a change in someone or something. What if God called a spiritual timeout? A timeout, a brief suspension of activity, break especially, a suspension of a play in an athletic game, a short interruption in a regular period of play during which a coach, watch this, officially stops the clock so that the players may rest, deliberate, or may, and make substitutions. <clears throat> But understand this, right? After the timeout, you go back into the game. Now, you might be saying, you know, some people come out the game and others go in. But what do we do when it's your life? See, every so often God will call a timeout. But watch this. You're not watching this by accident. You're not watching this by coincidence. You're watching this by divine connection. See, God laid it on my heart about putting this out there so that it could change the dynamic of people's life. You know, I remember when I was younger and I used to say, God, look at this world. All these people over here getting shot, people over here getting killed, all of this stuff, this negativity, all of this stuff. And I went on and I said, God, what you going to do about it? And his response was, what are you going to do about it? So it changed the way I live my life to be able to do things differently. But I'm like a high performance life coach. See, every so often a vehicle needs an oil change. And watch this, some vehicles need a high mileage oil change where it is high performance, watch this, where it is recommended because they have high miles, right? Some of us have high mileage because of the things that we've experienced in life. How many days were we on this earth even if you you are in bed sick for three months, days are still passing by. Time is still passing by. But if God called a timeout, imagine track and field, right? Hebrews 12 and 1, New King James Version. Therefore, we also, we are surrounded by so a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us watch this run with endurance the race that is set before us some of us have asked god for stronger shoulders bigger muscles because of what life has happened see i tell people this all the time it's not the hand that you are dealt in life it's how you play the hand now i don't play poker but I'm pretty sure that people know that you can have the greatest hand in poker and you can jack it up. Hmm. You can even fold. But here's the thing. Have you ever asked God to show you how to play your hand? You have people that they come in this world and their parents are millionaires, but yet they end up on drugs or they are struggling with that. And you can have people that can come from a foreign country with nothing, with two nickels and they, and they build an empire. You know, it's it's your choice. All you got to do is ask God to show you how to play your hand. Now, some of us are spiritually overweight, not W-E-I-G-H-T, W-A-I-T. We're spiritually overweight and we don't even know it. Psalms 27 and 14, New King James Version. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Psalms 40 and 1 BSB. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to hear me. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Verse 2. So here's the thing, right? 
God heard you. That's why he sent you here. This is just episode one. You know, some of y'all might encounter me on the other episode. But see, God wants to get a message to you. I'm just a messenger from God. But there's some things that he wanted to talk to me about for his people. There are things that people don't think that he cares about concerning this earth, concerning um, this nation, concerning this country. But Hebrews 12 and 2, New King James Version, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. In one of these podcasts, I'm going to I'm going to talk about the letter J when it was invented and how some people like to argue Jesus name being Yeshua. We know it was a Hebrew term, Hebrew name that was translated, but that's not what we're going to get to in this podcast. I'm going to get to that. But faith, watch this, because you got to be careful because everything that Google has is not correct. But we're taught, Google it. People say all the time, Google me. But there are things on it. They say, that's not me, though. huh? But here's a definition of faith from Google. This is what Google said. A strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Okay, Google, what if we had proof? Hmm. Now, the Bible defines this as Hebrews 11 and 1, New King James Version. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, New King James Version. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Watch this. For we walk by faith and not what it feels like. For we walk by faith and not what it seems like. See, because your feelings and emotions are valid. But what does the word say? What do you want to know the difference between you going through because you were disobedient or you going through because God allowed you to go through? See, there's a difference because sometimes we go through things and we say, God, what did I do? Or matter of fact, people around us can be saying, what did you do wrong? Why are your children going through this? Why? What did you do? And then we start to think, we start to, our mind starts to plague us. Did I do something? Was it something I did when I was a little kid and I stole a piece of gum? Hmm. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, New King James Version. While we do not look at the things which are seen, problems, situations, circumstances, people that walk out our life, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. First Timothy 6 and 12, New King James Version. Fight the good fight of faith. Do you know how to fight? Finishing the rest of the verse. Lay hold on eternal light to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. See, a lot of us don't know how to fight. We know how to fight the way the world tells us to fight, but not how God tells us to fight. Some of our minds are just running rampant. You know, God did not give you those children to drive you crazy. Some of y'all may be experiencing divorce. Some of y'all might have went through a bad breakup. Some of y'all might have lost a family member. That you felt like should have been here longer. Just lost a cousin. Shout out to my cousin Laura. You know she was 29 years old. That we just recently had to do. Her home going service. But not one time. Have I questioned God. And see that's something that we are actually taught. That's actually against the Bible. And I've seen people say this. You can't question God. Yes, you can. 
His word says that. Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, Call to me and I will tell you remarkable things or secrets that you do not know of. I mean, how many of us have called somebody and they don't answer? <laughs> or you called them and they are on social media. You know, like, okay, so you don't answer. So here's the thing. You can question God. And we're going to talk about that and how there are scriptures to back that up. And the reason why I talk in different translations, like I'm about to read 1 Corinthians 9, 24, New King James Version, is because there are certain translations that I want you to understand. And I'm going to break that down in another segment, another episode, <clears throat> as to why certain translations were changed or some scriptures were omitted. But the scripture says, do you not know that those who run in the race all run, but one receives the prize? But God is saying, run in such a way that you may obtain it. See, we do not compare ourselves to others. Just because they got to their dream faster than you does not mean that you are late. Delay does not mean denial. The Bible says, do not compare yourself with others because we can always look and find somebody that's in our minds doing better off. Because there are some people that, and we see all the time, right? They get a car, you be like, oh my goodness, like they, you know what I'm saying? But then their vehicle gets repossessed. We see celebrities get their vehicles repossessed. Some of the things that we see that are blessings are not blessings. Verse 25, everyone who competes in the games, BSB, trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown that is perishable. But we do it for a crown that is imperishable. Verse 26, NIV. Therefore, I do not run like I'm someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Because if you're just, you could just tire yourself out. And that's what a lot of us have been doing with our minds. Some of y'all are struggling with anxiety. Some of y'all are struggling with suicidal thoughts. Some of y'all are struggling with depression. <clears throat> and guess what? <clears throat> I've defeated all of them. So some of y'all are going to reach out to me. I'm going to be able to help um, some of y'all with that and show you that you can defeat them. And there's a way to go about it. You know, verse 27 NLT, I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Isaiah 61 and 1, New King James Version. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings or good news, as some translations say, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. See, some of us have bound ourselves in our mind because of things that happen. Well, I was in this marriage and I got a divorce because the spouse said that it was your fault that they cheated. So you feel like a failure. But is that the truth? Hmm. Whenever you put your faith in, watch this, whatever you put your faith in, it will grow. If you put your faith in doubt, it will grow. I did research on scary movie actors. God had me researching that. And you know that some of them said that sometimes we forget that we're in a scary movie and we actually really get scared. Now, watch this. They understand that it's a fake killer. It's a fake gun. It's a fake knife. Fake blood. It's a person with a costume on. Um, you have, they go over the lines over and over and over again. They go home and they even study them at home. Their lines. Um, there's a cameraman. There's a stunt doubles. Um, other characters. You know, the director. And they still forget. See, that's how powerful the mind is. That it can sense and know all of that. But then it still think 
you really actually in a scary movie. Hmm. And so some of us, your minds have been plaguing you for years. Y'all been wondering why you've been going through this and see sometimes people stay longer in relationships than they should because they put that faith in their person. Sometimes they fall in love with the potential and hence why they stay longer than they should. But if y'all remember growing up, uh, Jack and the Bean stop, you know, and I found out that it first appeared in, in 1734. It was actually called The Story of Jack Spring Springins and the Enchanted Bean. But what I want you to get from that is that your faith, remember, because it talks about having the faith of a mustard seed, right? Your faith is that strong that whatever you put it in, it will grow. Some of y'all have put y'all faith in, I'll never get married again because this marriage didn't work. Some of y'all have put y'all faith in, there's no more good men. Some of y'all have put y'all faith in, you know what, there's no more good churches. All the churches are like this because you've experienced a few. I tell people all the time, facts don't always equate to the truth. Hmm. Just because you have a fact don't mean that that's what it is. But Luke 17, 6, New King James Version. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. So what is God saying? God is saying that whatever is in your life that is not producing what it's supposed to, it can be cast out. Because y'all remember when Jesus rebuked the fig tree. If there's anything in your life that is not producing. See, some of us are dealing with things that like spiritual residue that are still from things that happen. You know, some of y'all, y'all might have been molested. Y'all might have been raped. Y'all might have been done wrong by your parents. You might have been abused. You might have been in a relationship. You might have trust issues and that's still affecting you. But guess what? God wants to remove all of that. Luke 17, 5 BSB. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Mark 9, 23. And see, I'm going to tell you this story. Well, I'm actually going to read this passage, but I'm going to tell you why this resonates with me and why God allowed me to go through some things. And I had no idea. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, New King James Version. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Verse 24, I immediately, the father of the child, cried out and said with tears, Lord, I, I believe. Help my unbelief. Some of y'all may be experiencing some things right now concerning your children. And this is why God has you watching this, because guess what? There is hope and God is saying put your faith in me and I'm going to show you so we're going to go back to verse 17 then one of the one in the crowd answered and said teacher I brought you my son who has a mute spirit verse 18 and whenever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid so I spoke to your disciples then that they should cast it out, but they could not. And he answered, verse 19, and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Verse 20, then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell to on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Verse 21, so he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. Now, Jesus asked him that. So this parent was dealing with this for a long time. Can you imagine this parent like, my child is never going to get better. Now, we are in a in the world that we're in right now, in the time that we're in, there's a lot of medicine 
and everything like that. We have a lot more technology. But this parent was experiencing being tormented from that. Verse 22. And often he had thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out and enter him no more. Verse 26. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead. So that that many said, he is dead. Again, I tell y'all, facts don't always equate to the truth. Verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him. And he arose, verse 28. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? Verse 29. And so he said to them, this kind, some translations say spirit or demon, watch this, can come out but by nothing, out by nothing but prayer and fasting. See, certain translations say only prayer. Now, if you scroll over, it's actually recorded in Matthew. Matthew 17, 21, some translations omit that. And so why am I talking about that today? Because I had a five-year-old daughter and my daughter is 16 now. My daughter was dealing with a convulsive, um, <clears throat> epileptic spirit, right? So she was having a seizure and I was like this parent and I was crying. And I said, father, I said, God, I don't know what to do. And see, I remember somebody told me on TikTok, they said the Bible is outdated. And I said, oh, no, it's not. See, I didn't know what to do. And God took me to that scripture. And guess what? I fasted and prayed concerning my daughter. And guess what? She has never, ever had another epileptic seizure. She doesn't take any medicine for it. There is no trace of it. Now, why am I telling you this? Because whatever your child is dealing with, you can fast and pray concerning that and it will re be removed. Now, watch this. Even autism. See, people don't even really want to talk about it, but see, I'm going to talk about what God wants me to talk about. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because you don't have to continue going through that. Now, if you choose to continue that, you may be on that, they may be on medication and that's fine. If that's where you're at and you're content and you don't want them to be delivered from that, or some of y'all might not even feel like it's a spirit. But guess what? They can go through that. And I asked God, I said, God, why was this scripture removed? And see, Doing research, I found out. And like I said, I'm going to go into more of this into an, another episode. But doing research, they wanted to make an easier version. And so, you know, the King James Version is not easy to read by most people. And so it was, you know, they did a poll and it was very hard to read. So it discouraged people from reading the Bible. So what did they want to do? They wanted to make an easier version and hence why they created the NIV. But here's the problem. They took scholars from different walks of life. And so um, when you take people from different denominations, and so they scoured the Bible, they had parts where they were going to put together. And so some people were reading that and said, this, mm, this, this only come out by prayer. And I, when I made this video, you know, it, it kind of went uh, viral a little bit. And I'm about my daughter and, you know, people were saying, oh, the power of prayer. And I was like, yeah, but don't understand, but understand this, that there was some, there was fasting. And so I was telling them about fasting and people would understand like, they're just not going to just come out by praying. Now, are there some spirits that can come out by praying? Yes. But here's the thing. It was omitted because, you know, when you have other people I'm like, why do we even need this? And they even took out the word and just made praying. And see, the spirit or demon understands that it does not have to leave. You know, it doesn't. So I thank God for that opportunity. 
about praying concerning my daughter and then fasting because she has never, ever had that. And I, and I was like, you know, people could have been like, well, what did you do wrong? Why are you going through this? See, God explained to me that my daughter, he allowed my daughter to go through this just so I can help other people. Second Corinthians 1 and 4, it says the comfort that God has given us when we were in trouble, watch this, we are supposed to give others. So that's what I'm doing. You don't have to go through, or actually, thank you, Holy Spirit, continue going through what you're going through. There's something that you can do about it. So what Loki's effect is, we're going to talk about some topics. We're going to talk about some things and what God has laid on my heart, some things that he wants to change. You know what I'm saying? And, and y'all see why I talk in uh, New King James Version or King James Version. You know, I do that. People say all the time, just read your Bible. Oh, no, no. Because there was a Jehovah Witness that came to my door. And see, here's the thing. When Jehovah Witness come to my door, I'm going to teach them. They're going to get taught the word. And guess what? They always enjoy themselves. See, I can talk to anybody. I've even talked to atheists. I've worked with atheists. and You know what I'm saying? And they don't have a problem with talking to me. So here's the thing. When they came to my door, I said, what translation do y'all read out of? And they said, the, the good news translation. And I said, if I was, and I said, go to this scripture and see if it's there. Matthew 17, 21. And the scripture is omitted. And Mark 9, 29 says, this kind of comes out by prayer. And I said, let me ask you a question. My daughter, if I just had your, your, your translation and that's it. My daughter would have still been suffering with this. So what is Loki's effect going to do for you? Again, some of y'all can reach out. Um, I do have personal sessions that I can have. And if you want me to be a personal life coach, um, I'm a relationships therapist. I do have my license, a marriage therapist a counselor, you know, I can interpret dreams. When somebody begins to speak to me, God begins to speak through me. And like I said, I'm just the messenger of God. I'm just doing my part. But that's what I just wanted to say, you know, saying that we're going to go in and I'm going to talk about what I actually do or the people that have came in contact with my life and how things have changed for their life and what they have done differently and how Loki's effect have affected them. And I don't, I give God all the credit. This is the title that God told me to give because guess what? It's giving you the keys to unlock the areas in your life. There are some things that we would like to know and when God let me know why I experienced that, I see why. Because he wants me to teach people how to do that. And I can just put it out there. I did a video and told them, you can fast and pray. I don't even tell people how to fast. That's the thing. You know, and God gave me a healing ministry and I have blessed oil. Um, <clears throat> but being able to change in the things that God wants to do through me and others and some people. You know, just people reaching out and just saying, man, thank you for praying for me. You know, but we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about and do a episode on that, about the people that I came in contact with that God has used me to help people. And that's what it's about. I, I tell people all the time, I care more about souls than friendships. I care more about souls than friendships because that's what it's about. Because at the end of the day, I want my heavenly father to be proud that's what i want and we're going to touch on some things you know that some people don't want to talk about and that's fine because you know god called me to talk about it and there's some that probably will talk about it you know saying this is about kingdom movement you know and the assignment we're going to talk about the assignment of the church a lot of us have missed the assignment some of us have just left the church and you're going to understand that we've missed the assignment but that's what it's about and so I give all the glory to God. Again, I'm going to have my social media hinges on there. Um, reach out um, also to, um, I have written a book called The Desire of Marriage. And so, you know, if you would like a personal copy, um, it is only $22. That's in shipping included. And I will ship it to you and I will personally sign it. But with that, you get a 15 minute power session. 
that I will answer all your questions concerning marriage or whatever relationships or anything like that. You know, I'll tell a story about a time that I had a dream about a woman that I thought was probably my wife, you know, um, when I was in college. But I'm going to touch on that. But I just want to say thank you to all those. And if you have purchased a book, I do have more on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. Um, just send me a picture of you holding it. And I want to give you a shout out on social media. Um, but I want to be obedient because my mom said, it's, God said, it's time for your book to come alive. And that's why God had me write this book. So I just wanted to be obedient. And like I said, for this, that we're going to do this thing, Loki's Effect. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you downloaded this um, on your podcast, um, on the podcast, thank you. Um, social media, wherever you're watching, YouTube, um, all my TikTok social media handles, um, you will see them on here. But I'm so grateful and so thankful um, for each and every one of you. Um, and pray for me as I pray for you. But we're going to tackle some things. If there's things that you want to ask, you know, why is this happening? Then I'll, I'll do as best I can, you know, saying and, and hear what God is saying. And thus said the Lord, you know, that's what it's about. I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to Loki's Effect. Um, we about to tackle some things and, you know, so we're going to talk about some things that some people don't want to talk about. You know, so we definitely going to do that. But, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, and first and foremost, you know, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you to the Holy Spirit. And we know above everything, God. So appreciate that. And just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. God bless. Thank you.